once you've made the shift from year six to year seven, so from primary to secondary school, on the first day of secondary school, you get this little slip of, of paper with what my secondary school called a global grade. And essentially what this global grade was, uh, was a predicted grade. So what? So based on the test that you did in year six, the previous year, you'd get a kind of predicted grade for every subject based on these uh, exam results. And bear in mind this global grade or predicted grade would just be one grade for every single subject. So it wouldn't be, you know, A maths, A English, B science, all this sort of stuff. It would be A or B or C or D or E. And that was kind of the predicted grade or the expected grade for you to get in every single subject. Now, I don't know if I'm the only one who sees the flaws in this. And obviously at the time and since then, I haven't really thought about it. I'll notice the flaws. But if you really think about it, the first day of secondary school, you know, with new beginners, you're nervous as fuck. You've got all this anxiety. You've got people around you you've never seen before. You're trying hard to fit in. You're trying hard to make friends. You don't want to be left out of the crowd and all this sort of stuff. And then the school system goes and labels you, bro. It literally puts a label on you on what you should be getting in every single subject. And you may think to yourself like, oh, no, you're just you're just salty because because you had a low uh, predicted grade and everyone else had higher predicted grades around you and all this sort of stuff. But I had the highest predicted grade you could get, bro. So that, that argument is completely invalid. It's not as if I'm someone with a low predicted grade and I'm jealous of the kids that had high predicted grades and saying the school system was unfair to me. I had the highest predicted grade you can get, bro. But I want to look at the people that had the lower predicted grades. First of all, how can you say that someone who's good at maths should also be good at history, should also be good at internet technology, should also be good at religious studies or whatever subjects we had back then? Secondly, how can you label a child based on their previous year grades of what they should get and put that label low? Like I know for me, because I had such a high predicted grade, I thought I was the dogs. I thought I was top of the world. You can't touch me. If you got a lower gr grade than me, you're a peasant. That was my mindset and that definitely spurred me on to go and do, do well in my exams and actually knuckle down, revise and take uh, secondary school pretty seriously. But I know for a lot of people that with the lower predicted grades, they kind of would only strive for those grades. Once you put a label on a 12 year old child, that's planted in their brain. That's planted as, oh, I'm a I'm a student that can only get a C, for example. I know you have like numbers and stuff in, in England, so like one, two, three, four, up to like eight. I'm not sure how that works, but imagine like in England, a child getting a label of a four and saying you should hit the four in every single subject. No child that's labeled with a C or a four is going to try and strive on to do better because as soon as they hit that target, they're like, okay, that's me done. You know, I don't need to work hard. I don't need to revise. I've, I've got my global grade. I've already achieved what everyone thinks I should have achieved. That's, I'm not going to have any, you know, social pressure or social stress on me pushing me on further to be more productive and more efficient. I've already hit where I need to hit. I can, I can relax. I can chill. I don't need to push myself. 